So here we are in 77 and a half north at the Kanak trash dump. It's very difficult to manage the waste in Greenland because it's so rocky, it's hard for them to dig a landfill. Often these trash dumps are located very close to the water. Although you can find pristine beauty in Greenland, the local communities often struggle to manage their waste. As population increases around the world, so does the amount of trash that we produce. Dealing with this is becoming a greater and greater issue. A percentage of this trash is plastic, and part of this percentage is winding up in our oceans. In 2013, we did a 6,000 mile survey heading out to the eastern side of the North Atlantic garbage patch. This was a section that uh, no one had collected data in before. For the first 46 days, things went well. We collected large amounts of uh, microplastics in our trawls, a surprising amount, and we uh, packed up and started heading back on day 47. Everything was going as planned until we found an abandoned ship. Yeah, this is kind of um, strange behavior for a sailboat in the water. It's not going anywhere, our sail's not up, motor's not on, halyards are all twisted. No sign of anyone. Well, this is one awfully abandoned sailboat, Wolfhound from the Irish Yacht Club. I have no idea what's inside. I'm gonna go search around. I hope I don't find any dead bodies or anything crazy like that. This place was left in a absolute wreck. I can hear water, I can hear water splashing around underneath of me. I'm afraid to open doors and cabinets. Afraid of what I might find around the corner. Hello? It's ridiculous, Davis. Well, no dead bodies. Thank God. Thank God. This is absolutely crazy, by the way. Here I am, 800 miles from Bermuda, 1,500 miles from the United States, standing on a very nice Swan 48. I think it's a Swan 48. Yep. Standing on a very nice Swan 48 in the middle of the ocean, when just this morning I woke up on a 42-foot Colvin Gazelle. And here I am. So this is day two. Uh, we've been dragging this thing for a little less than 24 hours. We've made it about 50 miles. Uh, it's kind of funny because we're towing a 48 foot boat with a 42 foot boat. This boat is uh, longer and is definitely heavier uh, than my boat. Yet we're doing our best to try to get her to Bermuda. We were running low on fuel after spending 47 days in the ocean. So we convinced the passing freighter to stop and give us 50 gallons of diesel. But after another couple of days of pulling the boat, our engine ended up breaking. So now we had two boats, both with broken engines. We spent another three days trying to pull this boat with just our sails alone until the weather picked up quickly and we had to cut the boat free as the line wrapped around our rudder, uh, threatening to break it off. After cutting free the abandoned ship, the wind died and we were becalmed for 23 days in the Atlantic, in the doldrums. But eventually we made it close enough to Bermuda to get towed in by the pilot ship. In 2014, we sailed 6,800 miles from San Francisco to Yokohama, Japan on a Harbor 29. We actually had to build the boat before we left. In 2014, we worked with five gyres, Sea Education Association, University of Tokyo, and Adventures for Science and Conservation. Some of our samples were being used to better understand the plastosphere. The plastosphere is a microbial layer of bacteria surrounding the plastics. And what they're trying to understand is, what is this bacteria doing on the plastics? Is it eating the plastic? Was it hitchhiking on the plastic? Are there bad types of bacteria like Vibrio? The samples we collected in 2014 were the first samples west of Hawaii that has been used to better understand the plastosphere in the Pacific Ocean. In 2015, 
And again this year, 2016, we've been doing microplastics trawls in Baffin Bay within the Arctic Ocean, so we can better assess the amount of microplastics coming up from the Atlantic and accumulating in the Arctic. Although we were looking at microplastics in the gyre, in Greenland, the number one contributor to marine debris is discarded fishing gear. All of our data we have collected has been used to help define the global amount of plastic trash in our ocean. There is an estimated 5.5 trillion pieces of plastic trash in our ocean worldwide. After our microplastic survey, we came up into Kanak, but we are still a bit early in the season, and the fjord was half full of ice floating around at random. We had to push through heavy patties of ice, uh, breaking it in half with our bow in order to get to Kanak. Now that we are here, we are going to fuel up and begin our survey for NASA. Thanks again for following the blog, and you can always donate via PayPal on the website.